today we're going to show you step by step how we had to completely remove the Atwood furnace in our RV about a year ago due to an issue where the furnace fan would kick on and blow cold air but it wouldn't light and believe it or not this beautiful puppy right here was the source of the issue. In this video we're going to show you not only how we repaired the problem but how we prevented it from ever happening again. We have a Keystone Cougar 25 RES and the designers at Keystone failed to place an access door on the outside of the RV for the furnace. If they would have installed an access door right here they would have made this job a whole lot easier. But since they didn't we had to remove the entire furnace from under the fridge to make the repair. Now let's go back in time to November 24th, 2019. All right, you, are you going to assist us this this uh, repair today, Selena? Okay, there are five ductwork tubes I'm going to have to remove. Three in the front, two on the side. And once I do that, I'll cut power and I will cut gas to the furnace. All right, so I have a 5 16 inch socket and just removing the, loosening the screw there to pull that off and do that with each one of these. Okay, you can see I got all the vents taken off there. Three on the front, two on the side. And now I have to remove a couple screws here I used my camera to see in the back there to see if there was anything else holding it. Couldn't see anything. So I'm hoping that that's it, just those two screws. And then we, we can just slide this out, hopefully. Got to be careful with these not to strip them. It appears that it be loose. Go and hook the power and the gas first and then we'll see if we can pull that out. There's a battery disconnect here. We're going to unhook that, turn that off. We're going to take the terminals off the battery itself as well. We're going to shut off the breaker for the, for the 50 amp service and unplug for good measure. I'm going to go to each gas compartment. This one has two one on each side of the front, so we're going to shut the gas off there, and we're going to shut the gas off here. Okay, we're in here at the stove. I'm going to see if there's any gas left in the line it needs to be burned off, which there is. So we're going to run that and burn that gas off. Here is the gas connection. We're going to take that loose. All right, I got a couple wrenches here. One to go on the end here. One on this side over here for the part that I'm going to turn because I don't want to damage anything. I'm sure that's why they have this made that way so you can put a wrench on there. And loosen that up, take that off. Okay, I was able to get the wire loose by removing that screw all the way in the back. I was fortunately able to get my drill back there and you can see that this harness here it's a zip tie with a hole and that was used to keep that wiring up off away from the metal that i'm sure gets pretty hot uh, i'm gonna have to cut that zip tie i don't want to cut the wires if i don't have to and i want to just cut that zip tie to give me enough slack hopefully to pull this unit out and be able to work on it without cutting the wires so that's the goal okay i got the unit out Looks like I'll have enough slack, hopefully, to, to get to everything I need to. I believe I will. That's what the empty cavity looks like there. After pulling the unit out, this is the sail switch. Take these couple screws out and remove that and see if that's the culprit. And... This could be the issue right here. See all that fur? Guessing that's the problem. So hopefully that's the problem. We're gonna clean that. And I don't know what we're gonna do with that. I think what we're gonna do to try to prevent this moving forward 
when we put this grill back on, we're going to get some screening to put behind it. The factory says not to put a filter in behind because it'll restrict the airflow. So I'm going to try to get some kind of screening that's got some rather large holes uh, that will catch the fur but still allow plenty of air to flow through and not restrict the airflow. So that's the plan. So uh, hopefully this is the issue and hopefully that, that'll fix the, the issue. We'll find out in a little bit. So how this, this sail works is, the sail switch, is the motor or the fan blades are right here. As that turns, it puts air pressure in this, this direction against this switch and it pushes it like that. So once it has enough uh, airspeed, it will close that connection and that will then allow the, the furnace to go into the next mode of operation and turn on. So the, the fur was wrapped around there, was not allowing that connection to close and engage. So we're just going to slide it back in temporarily for right now. And we got to run to the store to get a new zip tie to replace this one that I had to screw through it. So I want to keep that wire up and away from the metal, the wiring. And uh, I also want to get some screening for here as well. So we'll be back. Anne was thinking on her toes. I have another zip tie and she asked if it would fit through that old one. So I think this is going to work. I'll wrap this around the wire, tie it, and then secure it. There is the wiring all harnessed up and screwed back in place. All right, I got the unit back in place. I had to line up the flue pipe with the back of the unit and slide it in very carefully. Now I got the two screw holes lined up in front here. We're gonna put those in. Ductwork on the side installed. Just need to get these front ones installed. Gotta be careful with this stuff, not to rip it when you're working it. I'm going to reconnect the gas line here. Before I do that, and I may not have to do this, just going a little overkill here. I'm gonna put some true blue thread sealant on, pipe thread sealant, and uh, it's a vibration resistant PTFE sealant. It's good for metal and plastic. That way it'll be 100% whenever I seal this up. All right, I wiped off the excess. The way this is set up, it's got a flange on here that seals it with, I guess, a compression fitting is probably what that would be considered. But I always want to go the extra mile with these things just to try to avoid any type of leak if I can. So I'm going to tighten this by hand and then I'll use the wrenches to tighten it a little further. Okay, back outside, we're going to turn the gas back on, turn the electric back on, install the battery disconnect, turn that on. Here we are at our in-command center. We're going to go to heat. We're going to crank it up pretty good here. It's currently 69 degrees inside. So we'll crank it up to 74 and see what happens here. Now we may have to wait a minute until that gas comes through, so. Kicked on? Yeah? You can hear the burners. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Let's go. We've got uh, ignition. <laughs> so that should be it. Let's get this turned off so we don't get any more fur sucked into the unit. 
and I'll show you what I did there with the screening once that's all done. Okay, here's the screening that we bought from Lowe's, and it's an aluminum screen. Sorry, it's a little dirty, but uh, it's been in there for a year now. It has holes large enough for plenty of air to flow through, but small enough to make sure that the dog fur does not get through. So, and it, once again, it's been in place for about a year now, and it's worked like a charm. So, everything's great with that. Uh, and it also works well, this the same screening, to place underneath the vents to catch any debris that might fall down into your vent covers here. So, uh, highly recommend that, and I uh, hope this video helped you out. So if you have a furry little buddy like we have here, you may want to consider doing something similar to this just to prevent a problem, or if you've already had the problem um, and you want a solution so that you get to keep your, your buddy, then I would highly recommend that you do something similar to this. All right, we'll see you on the next one.